Hello YouTube, I just finished a small painting of an onion, I'm going to show you. It's a, a small painting that I, where I show you how I uh, paint a small object. This is an onion, I show you here with a frame on it also. And uh, it is quite yellow, I see. The digital video has kind of problems with uh, getting my colors right but hopefully it's kind of useful for you anyway I and mean, maybe I should change the lighting in here or something uh, that's the onion and uh, this is the result I've been working with all these small crispy things on the onion and the textures and the layers and Everything I find important in a painting, uh, the paint, it was quite difficult actually because uh, the background and, uh, and the onion were quite similar. So I had some fight on my hands actually. Anyway, that's the result and uh, yeah, you can see how I did it. <coughs> it also became quite a long video. I don't seem to be able to to um, stop. The first segment is of the full uh, full um, sketching process, so that might be interesting for you. Anyway, uh, I hope you uh, share my videos, subscribe to my channel. You can also donate a little bit if you find them helpful. Uh, I'm trying to build up my Patreon, so you can also become a patron if you like to do that. And uh, I might start streaming on YouTube, but I see what if I if I find time for it. Anyway, thanks for watching and have a good one. Hello YouTube, uh, it's me again. I'm gonna paint a small painting now. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do of uh, of this uh, onion. So I'm gonna teach you to paint. An onion. Uh, I love painting onions and there is a reason for that and the reason is basically that they have all the textures and all the it's almost like a painting before you actually start. I'm gonna paint it like square and I'm gonna put it on this pedestal in a way and this rock, this stone, this uh, brick and I'm going to mold it into a small painting that is going to an exhibition in my hometown, Kame, Lions, it's called Lions Exhibition, it's a yearly thing. So, I'm going to paint this and, yeah, not try to make it too long uh, and show you how I mold it. I will start by um, doing the whole sketching process. Uh, in one go and then I will um, uh, kind of make uh, just a short, shorter burst of, of paint so to show you how I evolve it into a finished painting like the apple I painted um, yeah as you can see onions is like paintings it has a nature if you look at things in nature, they uh, kind of look like paintings if you look at them closely, like leaves and in the autumn or stuff like that. My avocado plant is really starting to grow. Makes me happy. I love things that grow. So, okay, get ready for onion okie dokie dokie um, ready for onion layer one am I standing in in a way anyway I have to turn it up a little bit I think like this now the onion is over there and uh, what I do as usual so I start just by, I need to place it 
in this and uh, I just kind of do it like this and I, I see what I want to have in it, how big I want to have it and I just place the light. I want to keep it in the middle somewhere. Uh, I want a little bit of the rock but also it's also a good thing to have it a little bit under so and there's this thing coming from the onion and down like this and here and something there it goes around like this and like this so you don't want it to be too big on the canvas and you don't want it to be too small uh, well, you can do whatever you want. If you want more space around it, more of that, you can do that. But I prefer to do it. Um, to focus on the onion. In this one, anyway. If it was a bigger canvas, I would actually focus more on the space around it. But that is not the case here. So, what I do is I use a lot of, uh, the onion is in the um, more reddish and yellowish uh, the light, in the lights. So see, I start on a, a darker canvas, the canvas is covered with a thin layer with turpentine. Uh, with um, raw umber. I prefer to use um, Winsor Newton's raw umber for that because it has more a neutral color to neutral color. Uh, this is actually Old Holland and it is darker a little bit more against the red. Uh, Vincent Newton is more against the green and for some reason I like to start but I haven't got any more left. I used to use uh, Vincent Newton colors a lot but then I moved on to mostly using uh, Old Holland because I had this thick clay like texture or thickness of Minecraft clay. Probably said that a gazillion times by now. But that's how I like to do it. Yeah. I almost forgot. <laughs> almost forgot I wasn't sure I had put on the camera, sorry. Um yeah. I really love doing these small paintings because it is very good training and you get a result quite quite fast compared to the bigger paintings and uh, the prices aren't too high so uh, people can afford buying them and they are original work which I think actually the sketching process is not what takes the most time and actually the molding process when I go deeper into the textures so I can actually make quite a good uh, sketch in 20, 20 minutes, half hour maybe, sometimes an hour this may take a little bit longer Know. But then the molding process starts up when you start adding detail, over painting, lazur, and all the things that in the end creates a um, artwork with substance. So yeah. And creating art or painting is actually trying transferring your 
subjectivity onto a canvas. You can see I did a little bit of mistake, should be a little bit more over there. And I just keep actually adjusting everything through the whole painting process. That's what I do. I adjust, adjust and adjust and adjust. A lot of artists, I see figurative artists, are very, make very rigid sketches. I like to use a lot of time on getting the uh, drawing right. And I like just to kind of delve into it and correct it as I go along. Of course, with bigger paintings, that can sometimes become a problem if you do some big mistakes. So if it's bigger figure paintings, I try to be a little bit more uh, careful and uh, thinking about what I do. It's actually seven in the morning. <laughs> doesn't matter because I have a studio on the ground in Oslo, a big studio where there's almost no daylight. So I can be as much a vampire as I want. Uh, you see now, maybe concentrate a little bit, not talk too much. a shadow. so hard yesterday that I should probably hold the power up. <laughs> Stupid. But exercising keeps my head straight. I was at the gym when I was at the gym today I trained so hard that I actually felt like an animal. Felt really hard training. It felt so physical. It was so such a nice feeling because as a painter you tend to, and a thinker and painter you tend to become so much all mind that you. I personally need the outlet of martial arts and hitting and screaming and really hard training, weight training, body weight training. Uh, to ground me. Sometimes I do too much, uh, but that is in my nature. I'm not a person who go silently through the yeah door, as I say, in a way. I tend to go extreme. So. I think that also tend to come out in my paintings that I never able to be content or it's always one more thing that has to be done. But that's how I am, so just have to live with it. There's only some blue when you have that much and there are reds in the background, both reds and blues. Uh, it's a lot of that I have put something in a some wooden stuff in the background so I could get the colors, the orange the color 
parts in the onion to really stick out. Uh, and that is also important if you want to create more sculptural things, you have to have some contrasts uh, in, in the beginning. So that you see I did a mistake there. So down here. So there's a shadow. Yeah. So I, I usually put some light on the side light like they would do in in older times and they used of course um, kind of small windows to send in daylight or they even painted in a in, um, lamp with the oil lamp I've heard. I don't know what's true or not here but anyway they created some kind of spotlight with mirrors and um, and um, small openings in the window one that fell on the canvas and one that fell on the model so they got this great contrast today we can actually do that with lamps and fluorescent lights so it's easier to be a painter 24 7 because the light is always there so start become a little bit more i wanted to kind of I put it on the, on the edge because I want it to kind of fall out. Now I see I have to do some adjustments already because I always do these small mistakes. But the good thing about oil paint is that you can also always overpaint. Overpaint and um, uh, just keep going. Also see that there, this is going to be a problem because I almost can't see the translation or um, how it glides over into the background. It's very subtle and it's going to be a challenge to get it right. But that's this is what is kind of great about it. Remember, I always put thick layers on the most light areas. It's going to be overpainted anyway, but I start so I build more texture there, so that I I uh, get some more texture to work with when it has dried. And that's the problem with oil paint that it has to dry in between the in between the layers but you can use cigarette you can kind of hang it over an oven so it will dry a little bit faster if you want to keep if you're not going to paint for a few days and you want to keep the the color on the palette uh, so it's not drying a couple of ways you can do that. You can put the whole palette into the fridge or you can take the colors you haven't used onto a mirror and put it into the fridge and then take it off. Because in a fridge they, they not fridge but um, refrigerator, sorry, uh, you don't want to freeze it. Uh, they will, it will slow down the drying process quite significantly. So it can actually keep. But the goal should always be to paint so much that the color actually never dries on your palette. That should be the goal of a painter. That you just paint and you move after the palette has become very dirty. You just take the colors and move on to another palette and you just keep on working every day. And that is why I have a lot of different palettes, I have big ones, I have small ones, smaller ones for, for very detail when I want to be a real surgeon, 
I use a small palette with small piece of color to get into it. That's all from usually in the end of the process. Um, and if I'm doing big uh, surfaces, I have a huge palette. So, and as you see, I'm using these. Um, they are um, Schweinwurst. <laughs> they are boar uh, here, or whatever you call it. It's, I don't remember now. It's called boar, like pig, pig brushes. I can't remember right now. Um, so. See how I start to shape it? You have that onion shell or skull, as it's called in Norwegian. And uh, you can also shape it by mm -hmm. okay. maybe I should make two videos here. One that's sketching process and one or should I put it into one? Maybe it's best to put it into one video, like a two hour video, as usual. <laughs> mm. My YouTube channel isn't that much, hasn't that many views, but I think I have a captive audience who we really look forward to the next video. And I kind of earn a dollar or a half a day on it, so it's not much. So if you feel the urge to support me, you can donate a little bit. That would really make me happy. They will see, hi, I enjoy your stuff. I want to show it to you by paying for a cup of coffee uh, yeah it starts to look like an onion it really makes me happy to know that people get something out of it and uh, I do not mean that people should donate if they don't like to I just say it's an option uh, I take pleasure from teaching others, I take pleasure from uh, uh, the comments and uh, the mails I get and um, stuff like that. I know it's my contribution to maybe make the world a little bit of a better place. I mean, people who do create a work tend to be a little bit more thoughtful. Um, it's a good thing. Well, Adolf Hitler was an, an exception to that rule, I guess. But so, what do you think? Does it start to look like an onion? <laughs> <coughs> Let's see how much time I spent now. Oh, twenty minutes to create an onion. Let me see. Um, it will stop in a while and then. It takes a little bit more time when I'm talking. Maybe I should just shut the fuck up and do this. And talk when I've actually something to say. Let's see. The problem is that I always have something to say. <laughs> I'm also going to paint a yellow rose, a dried rose. Maybe I should make a video of that one too, just for fun. Just to show you how I paint a rose. Maybe I should just make a video for every single painting I make. 
So if I should die suddenly, not just my paintings will be there, but my videos will stay on YouTube for many, 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 many years. And maybe they even start producing some revenue and I could have it donated to Doctors Without Borders or something. Don't you see? <laughs> I really enjoy this work. It is right now anyway because because the sketching process is always so dynamic. It is it is a form of mind dance. My brain or just firing and I'm getting hyperactive and and subdued in a way in the same time. They're very happy from painting. So if you have some issues with depression or, or bad things happen to you in your life, you feel lonely or stuff like that, find yourself a creative hobby and also combine it with healthy food and training, preferably martial arts is very good. It's like dance or dance, yeah, dance is very good. When we were younger, I would actually, when I was 36, I wonder about become starting with dance, and I went to the Boda Academy in Oslo. I was thinking about starting up. Because I have been doing karate and taekwondo, I've been doing karate for many years, and I have been doing taekwondo for many years. But then I never went back, and I regret it now because it's kind of late in the afternoon, and I got some inflammatory shit in my hip, which. Is actually getting better, but I went from being flexible as a ballet dancer to stiff as an old man in almost no time at all. I'm breaking it up now by just doing yoga and stretching and building up my muscle mass and my feet. Okay, probably stop soon. I do hope that you get something out of this. Because I sure so do. People get shocked when they see how fast I can actually do this first sketch. But it is. That's also why it's so easy for me to see how much time people actually have used on a, on a, on a painting. Yeah, I've seen a lot of nice sketches in my time, but I also find it kind of annoying that some people are hiding behind one This shadow is longer down. But to create more dynamic, I'm going to put the shadow in here anyway. And the shadow of this that is actually longer down to get a more, get some more room into it. Yeah. Um, a sketch painting will never be a finished painting for me. I can appreciate uh, appreciate a nice sketch because there are a lot of uh, interesting things happening in the first layers. But to just stop there and never keep going is to me not enough. 
uh, I want to see uh, it grow. I want to see. I know what's the greatest challenges is, and um, that's what I want to see in finished artwork. I want to see skill. I want to see difficulty. I want to see the artist who really going into his work and pushing his limits. Uh, yeah, that's what I want to see. So I'm gonna just pause for a second. I need some coffee <coughs> because it's early in the morning. And then I will do some more with the sketch. So the sketching process will approximately take an hour, 40 minutes, 50 minutes at all, to make this very rough first sketch. I hope you learned something, you can see how I use my pencil. Um, it took me years to, it took quite many years to, because in the beginning it was much harder. It didn't go fast as I can sketch now. It took much more time to make a good sketch. And my sketches were more, more figurative because, but then I had problems actually finishing them. The sketches it was usually better than the finished paintings. And actually sometimes I wonder if that is also happening now, but I will keep on stretching for perfection. Okay. Yeah, that was a nice sketch. That was 28 minutes. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. Then I had my coffee, and uh, I will do some touch up, and then I will make it dry. You see how rough it is, and that's how I like to keep it. The first touch. So I'm just gonna build. It's gonna be more light here. Now. As I said, it doesn't have to be perfect the first time. Uh, and this one's going to be more up there. <clears throat> Keep it loose. I love that because Crispy. Okay. What you also can do when you keep working is that coincidences appear, and you just it's not necessary a hundred percent how it looks, but you just keep it because sometimes coincidence create aesthetics on a uh, different level. Mm -hmm.
So the same, we can see actually the palette on a, a different video. Like, I haven't done much studying of how to make videos. I can't actually spend that much time on that because I'm not really earning any money on this. So I have to. But I think it's good enough for people who are really interested in painting and so I have a video on YouTube that I'll post a link to on, on the end screen and on cards where that is the name is just how to use the palette. I might do another one. But I also want to start making videos that can only be seen on Patreon. So for patrons, I want to try to build up that. Maybe make this into some can maybe earn a little bit of money on it. But my, it is, to, in the beginning anyway, it was just about, just about um, documenting stuff. And I guess, I can't really get more rich on this. Anyway. Uh, Patreon. It's funny. You know, I want to have a lot of views on Twitter or stuff. Get naked. Shake your ass. Be a girl with a big butt. <laughs> Thousands. So much porn. So much useless information and entertainment. Try to make more content that has some, some, um, bring with it some positive stuff, not just stupid entertainment. Believe me, I'm nothing against girls with big butts, but uh, it is a shame there is that like it's the most attention because there's so much great stuff out there on the internet science uh, philosophy painters art all kinds of documentaries about the world history and what gets the most views is just the most simplistic stupid shit and it's so sad that we are living in a world where people prefer stupid shit and not things they can actually give them something I've come to a point where I can't even see more like bad TV series because I feel so empty after seeing an episode that I feel like I'm hungover and the more I the, the deeper I have become the harder it is for me to not be in touch with myself and uh, going to the movies or being drowned in bad entertainment just feels horrible. It actually, I can actually feel a depression coming while after I've seen something that isn't good. Like I, I started watching this series called The Designated Survivor or something like that and uh, so bad but it kind of they made it in the same way as 24 and it's the same guy playing and 
is also is addictive because a lot of shit is happening so it's kind of turns off your brain but then and that's why it's so addictive because when it turned off you always wants to see more and it's just bullshit it's just fucking bullshit political correct bullshit and I just stopped watching it. I think I saw five episodes or something. And I just decided to quit because when I saw one episode after painting or something like that, I just felt horrible. I felt alone. I felt like I didn't have any contact with myself anymore. And I just I don't want to do it anymore. So yeah. See now, it's starting to grow, start to become something. I can actually keep working on it and yeah. Maybe I also put in there's a line behind it. Stuff like that. It's also a little bit longer out here, but I can there's a wooden stuff behind it. If I put in that there, it might balance it more. There's stuff like that you do. Um, to create the more static. Because this one, this line can actually weigh up for that. And to weigh it even more up, I would just go in and make this one a little bit longer. So I can drag it a little bit over there. That was a little bit too much. Let's see. That is the kind of stuff you start seeing when you have been painting for many years. You start seeing things more immediate. And, uh, yeah, this doesn't really so good right now but it's a, it's, a, it's a sketch if I could shut up a little bit so I could actually concentrate oh. remember the colors you see on the video oh, sad to say not completely true compared to reality for some reason the camera doesn't pick up the colors exactly as they are but it's also something I just have to live with I guess so yeah now it's actually a little bit more flat Sonia. But that was also for another day. So in a way I, I, I observe the object in stages or yeah. And I come kind of closer and closer to the object over time. I think this rock is also now on this 
break is going to be a little bit more like this. And there's a quite clear shadow behind here. Anyway, I'm going to basically just stop now, soon, if I can, if I, if I manage to tear myself away from it. And it's a very good beginning. Basically, it took me a half an hour to create a sketch that can be a good start. There's also a thing behind there. And this one has got more up there. Yeah, and then. Blah blah blah. Now it's very difficult to tear myself away from it. Mm -hmm. And there are also lights hitting underneath here. That's the stuff that comes later because the light here hits from there to there. Yeah. So, yeah. And yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. Now I start to see better. Now I see that this one gonna be a little bit more or is it this one? It's gonna be all this is this one gonna be a little bit more there or this one I guess a little bit more over there. So like this and that is a little bit but Depends where I stand actually, so if I, but I think it's going to be a little bit thinner. So it depends if I stand here, it gets here, so you have to figure out one place to stand and don't let yourself be confused and start moving stuff because you are moving yourself. That's also important. Important. Yeah, I'm starting to fuck it up because I'm tired and I have quit seeing a long time ago. Anyway, until next time, then I will put on the sur with. Um, Reduje Fernis and keep painting. Just a little bit more. I would recommend doing still lives. It's good training. Can be quite liberating. Yeah, that was better. Yeah, okay. Forty minutes. Okay. No, fifty minutes. Oh. Let's see, uh, focus. Okay. Okay, layer number two. Let me see. And uh, then it's the I start as you see now it's kind of dry. I could put on some retouche finish, but I'm gonna do the 
que da, da uh, uh, well I put on put on um, this blue reddish thing to get some of the textures as you have seen me do before you see how the textures now from the from um, uh, brush strokes are um, coming you can see that and there's some oil but it's mostly turpentine it's only 30% oil and 70% uh, turpentine so it tend to not be too um, oily and when I do this I actually don't have to put any oil into the color either because uh, the oil is already on the canvas and I just scrape off the excess there you see here uh, Matter at this point, is it kind of loose now for some reason? I don't know why. But, uh, I guess I have to straighten that up a little bit before I start because it's not nice to have this. Canvas. Oh, there's no one there. I guess I just have to turn this off for a second. Okay, I'm back. Uh, I had to put in these. I don't know what it's called in English, but I had to bang it out a little bit so the canvas became more like a drum. And now I can. I just use a hammer and these. Chiloch. Chiloch. It's a name in Norwegian, I can't remember what it is in English, but I guess you know that. Um, I also like to, some people like to use um, wood, and paint on wood, uh, put uh, gesso and primers and stuff like that on wood. Personally, I prefer canvas, and that is because when you paint on it, it actually moves a little bit. It uh, gives you uh, some kind of uh, more uh, more dynamic response to your brush, but it also can't be too loose because then you start losing uh, control. So anyway, uh, that's what I do, and now it is layer number two, and hopefully you will. Enjoy it. I'm not going to make this video into a three hour thing. I mean, the sketching process took a little bit longer than I thought. Uh, like a, an hour, but I think uh, 40 minutes, 45 minutes. But I think I'm going to cut it down a little bit and maybe move one of the files. I'll see what I do. I think. People who like my videos kind of like that they are actually instructional and that takes some time. It can only also it's a good way for me to to document my work and if I should die suddenly some reason uh, my videos will stay on YouTube for a very very long time and uh, uh, be helpful to people just think about it if Rembrandt or Vermeer not that I think I'm as good as them just to be clear but that's what I'm stretching myself. 
the words, of course, because it's the best. But just think if they could have made videos or even process photographs explaining how they were thinking and helping others in the world to become better painters. That would be amazing. And that is what YouTube and stuff like that gives us. It gives us a possibility to reach across borders and nations and cultures and share information and stuff like this. Um, a very sweet girl in Iraq actually became a atheist just by watching my videos and listen to the lectures of Sam Harris and and um, Christopher Hitchens and stuff I put in the background. She loves painting and she has been learning a lot from it. And it is it is a pleasure to know that I could actually stretch stretch my hand in a way and touch people in other parts of the world. And. Uh, contribute to make their lives better. That's a nice thought. So, despite that I don't earn any money on this, it is a nice thing, thing to know that I touch people all over the world. So, my YouTube channel is growing slowly but steadily. And in like 200 years, I'd probably be able to make a living of it. <laughs> yeah. I get okay prices for my paintings in Norway and stuff anyway, so I, I, I can survive. Actually, if I lived in the poor parts of the world, I could live over it, basically, almost, anyway. Because most other people in the world are actually living on basically a dollar a day, or half a dollar a day, or maybe even worse. So. But Norway is a very rich country, but it's also very expensive to live here, because of the oil and of many people, so we have, it's almost like Kuwait in a way, people are quite spoiled and they want more, more, more. I just want what I need to paint, to get my healthy food, to go to the gym, and sometimes travel a little bit and if I really save up some money buy myself a Rolex once in a while <laughs> oh god anyway back to the painting you see now I'm just starting to build out in the light areas first and yeah I should take a pause from the strength training uh, for a few days, a week maybe, and just stretch. Um, okay, you see, I, I do just start, and I, I now it's a slower process because I need to focus the, uh, the light, uh, the places that is actually more light, and then when I start building on top of that again, it becomes even more texture here, and then you just keep on piling on, and the differences in, in uh, relief uh, in the painting will become 
bigger and bigger, the more over layers or over paints I have. And that's how I create the illusion of uh, a 3D reality in the painting. You can also do it with neons like uh, Hol Holbein, Holberg, these old figurative painters who didn't actually use so much so much uh, texture but they do lack the punch, they do lack that uh, sense of reality uh, that I find so attractive in um, Rembrandt's work and in some of the best of, uh, of uh, Johannes Vermeer. You can also see how Turner has built his landscapes in the same traditional relief kind of way. And that is kind of how you have to think when you are trying to create a good piece of painting. Now, what is a good piece of art is a totally different discussion because, you know, in arts there are no no really objective rules. Uh, it's more up to the galleries and the people that has the power in the art world to decide what is good or bad art. And they can take anything and make it into gold. But my project, my thing, is uh, for my own sake, for my own sanity, try to become a good painter. I don't really care if people are saying it's good art or not, as long as it is a good painting and it has that aesthetic dimension that I'm, I'm in love with in the traditional art. So, and I think if it becomes aesthetic enough, good enough, honest enough, real enough, it will, it will be poetry and aesthetics, aesthetics, and to me that is enough. That is when I'm looking at a piece of art, I always look first for skill, then if I think it's well done, difficult, I move to subject matter. It's almost like for me to wanting to get to know a girl uh, in a, of course, sexual way or sensual way or as a, as a woman, not as a friend, but as a different thing. I first look at her but then I look at her face, her skin, her hands, and if all that fits to my uh, preference, I get interested in her personality. Uh, yeah, and it's kind of the same thing with paintings. It's a horrible thing to say, but it's actually true. People do getting dragged into things that are aesthetic, beautiful. And people who like my paintings are liking them because they feel, as they tell me, they feel real, they feel honest, and they like the skill and uh, that drives them in and that is what my customers pay for so and I will do my best to make it as good as possible hmm. it is only a certain type of uh, art 
That's, and it is the art based on aesthetic principles and skill that I'm interested in. I really don't care about conceptual art. It is just not my thing. Anyway, now you see I'm starting to build and I will keep on building for a while and then I will put the camera on. I'm gonna start forming these things, forming putting down the also you can have a sketchy background or you can make it a background who feels like it's there. And in this one I'm gonna make a background that is both in a ways in the background but also gonna feel like it's there. So I'm also gonna work with the textures in the background. Anyway, yeah, blah blah blah. Yay. Uh, I have been doing a lot of shit. I've been working with this now for way too long. And I didn't really get anywhere because I did some mistakes. I, uh, for some reason, I started to make everything bigger. And that is always a mistake. I actually didn't concentrate, so the onion kept growing, <laughs> literally, on the canvas, and I, I had to walk back the cat and make it smaller again. And um, that is very time consuming if you don't concentrate and get it on. Where the fuck is my pencil? <clears throat> so that's what I did. So but now it kind of started to I saw that everything I had done was kind of symbols and not really I hadn't really looked at the object because there's a lot of things happening here. So I'm just gonna mark up these lines and that will be painted over so I see where it's going. And it's so silly of me to waste so much time on the obvious. Uh, like this, the shadows. But it's going to be nice in the end. I just have to concentrate. Because when it grows, it means that you have stopped, you actually have stopped looking at uh, what you are painting. And you your brain tells you, for some reason, keep adding, add, add. Oh, it, it isn't enough. It's like you add. But what you should say is subtract. You should take things away and make it smaller. So, when you start on a painting uh, object, always decide how big it's going to be on the canvas before you go any further because and you stick with it you are like you don't add you just move it around if it's too much here you just cut back and you add maybe there and you you keep just moving the clay around so you actually don't fuck it up. I remember a girl when I went to art school. She had this sculpture and it started as a normal size and in the end it looked like the like the 
Easter Island sculptures that just kept on growing and growing and growing and growing. And the more trouble she got into, the more it was growing and growing. And in the end, I just told her, you just, just look at the model. Just don't let it grow anymore. <laughs> she got so angry. And, oh, it's supposed to be like No, it wasn't supposed to be like that. It didn't get any better. She had used up half the clay in the art school. Oh, that's thing without getting any closer to the real object. So and the same thing can happen with a painting if you don't concentrate. Just keep adding stuff without actually seeing what's happening. Now it's so wet that I can actually just paint wet in wet and that's a nice experience actually so now it looks a little bit more like an onion but it's still symbols all these lines are now just there to guide me next through the next layer and also the shadows behind is very um, in this one is extremely close to one another that will give me problems. So I have given me a problem in this painting, but I will, as usual, do my best to solve it. So, and I even had to move the light down because up here, there's a lot of things happening in the texture and. When I do start to get into all these things that goes down like this and I give it more shape and I start to get into the, into the more onion texture, I think it's gonna start getting better. I see that I find that the colors are much too vivid. Uh, but on the film than in reality. But yeah, maybe I should adjust it. And, uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm just gonna let it dry until next layer now because I've been fucking around with it for hours now since last time, and I actually didn't get anywhere because the mistakes I did. I just have to, as I said, walk back the cat. Uh, and, uh, but the good thing is that it gives a certain amount of texture and, um, and uh, not texture but in a way I don't know what's happening to when I do that but it adds something to it. The problems you get add something to the painting. Actually, it's further down. It's so fucking annoying that I can't concentrate properly. So much happening now that I start to see. But again, it doesn't matter. I have many other paintings to do before it's finished anyway. But it's so annoying to start seeing 
the mistakes one was doing. Like it's far down. Sincerely hope you learned something from this. Because it's much harder for me to paint when I'm talking. Yeah, that was better. To do something with the lighting inside this, my workspace because it tends to be too vivid on the videos. See, and there will also be lights under there, but it can't be. It's so easy to trick the brain into believing that it's, things are lighter than they are, but there's a very strong red red color it looks very strong but it isn't it's underneath here and it's also under here because not red but yellow a yellow and red because the light from the stone is thrown up like this and I tend to misinterpret it as much brighter, but when you squint your eyes or do that like this, you can actually see that is when it comes to the amount of strength in the light, it is very, very deep, but it pops out because of the things around it is much more. So, dude. so okay I'm just gonna leave it at this and let it cry and then make it better next time yeah okay Okay, so before I start on a new layer, I, it has now dried for a few days and uh, I just put on this Reduche Fermis so I can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, as you can see all the shadows and stuff are coming back. That is why you put on a Fermis after a while when it has properly dried. You go back in and you put on a fanis to get uh, colors, all the levels in the, in the picture or painting to the right place. Because a figurative painting like this is painted for different, um, it's very spatial, but that space can actually disappear if um, all the colors just turn totally try so um, so you will actually lose some of the of the natural depth so it's kind of seeing it through a glass uh, or something uh, it is a mix between um, Harpix and uh, turpentine I don't know, maybe it's 30 70 or something I'm not, I don't remember that we can check that out on on uh, YouTube or something <clears throat> and then I do usually I would like this dry a little bit but it dries pretty quickly so 
So I'll just then take some some um, some of the blue and um, and make um, a lasso, which is in violet, blue and red. And I put that on top of it, as you can see. I always do that. So now you can see some of the texture. And also the color is falling into the cracks uh, in the texture. So um, the surface becomes more... It's easier to see actually where you are going when you do that. Because you have now darkness again. And you just start pulling out the light. And I use uh, different blue and red. Usually I use um, Kaplak and uh, French Ultramarine because, um, but I can also use other colors. It depends just how dark I want it to become. You see now I kind of bring out some shadows with this lasso. And that is also how Rembrandt did it I think uh, and uh, because when I and that's the problem with when they restore the paintings all these effects are very thin so it must be very hard for the, the guys who are uh, come to it now, who are fixing the old paintings to know what is dirt and what is actually color and pigment because now I go in and I scratch up some of the light again. I remove the excess oil and color, which then puts there, and I take that away. And you kind of get a more dynamic surface. Then I take a uh, start with a. I always start. Usually I start with the lights because your brain will always drag you towards the light. Uh, like if you meet a person, uh, the first thing you try to notice is the face and face or facial. And and in an object you will also go for what is the most important. I mean if you so, to get a good start, I always start with the light. And now, I just work myself from there again. Like I did in the first place, you know, the first sketch, I do the same thing. And I keep on repeating these things over and over again. Until I feel that it is, that it has some... Well, it has this uh, right texture or the right color. And now I can also, when I do that, I, I, I get full effect of, of the lasso and the colors underneath. So I kind of just start to... Now I'm more careful in what I'm doing uh, because I'm going into the process of the last finishing layers, maybe three layers, this one and two more, until it's finished, or can be viewed as finished. <laughs> finished is a very relative concept, so it's very hard to know when to stop, and sometimes you just go too far and you have to let it dry again and then you go back to it and keep working. And yeah. And I see these have been now down to also get this back on track and go for the this is the 
see now I'm getting this more underneath this texture and I'm getting these more fluid or lighter brush strokes it kind of gives it a a more natural feel to it so this is why I call clay, uh, paint actually clay because um, that's how I think when I paint so there and now it's more you get a more and more surgical more and more focused how the nuances and how I think uh, yeah also changed a few things I actually fell down to the floor the whole onion so different things were changed on the onion itself so but gave me especially a little uh, this one got more light so it also gives uh, kind of a, it links it more together starting to be more meditative med meditative um, I should start doing sculpture soon because It will make me connect even better. The shapes. Sometimes you put on strategic brush strokes, strokes that explains a shape somewhere, like uh, there's a, you know, like this, and it kind of explains the, the motion. And it also creates a little bit of dynamic. So you don't want to want to brush everything out so the brush strokes disappear. You want it to to live, to kind of yeah, to, to be a little bit alive. And to get it to be a little bit alive you need some diversity in brush strokes and directions and all kinds of stuff. So see now I do like this and it's a little bit too light too much light in it so then I take some blue and I drag it into the color and it comes a little bit grayer not gray but a, but a secondary third color and it falls back in again and the deeper you go more you paint, go into different shapes within this, and it's a very crispy surface. Uh, the onions always have this crispy shelf. Shell? Well, I don't know. It's called in English. 
I must evolve my English. My English. So you have a lot to work with when it comes to I love painting onions. I painted a lot of onions. I love apples and onions and shells. Oh, these coons, as it's called. Um, because um, it has so much happening in them. And I love um, um, wood that you find sea you know when I've been in the sea for a long time it has this beautiful it's almost like a time capsule you can see see how the elements have uh, have form and shape the textures and the surfaces okie dokie dokie okay Funny, I had to put on the... I've been working for a few hours now. And I don't know if you can see it, but... I went away from it and then I saw that I had... done something wrong here. So I need to get this a little bit more... into that shape there. Okay. <clears throat> and explain it because there's some light hitting and it comes kind of on top of this one and there is a shadow underneath um, kind of like this so So in a way it kind of crawls around like that. And then to enhance that I can put on some more reddish here. So so there's something under there. something with that <coughs> shape now I'm getting into the, the more deeper concentration to find the right shape and it's so important to not overdo it because it, it can be lost in a second you do you lose concentration and you put on some more too much white or I don't think enough and it's lost and you want to scream like Gollum and the Lord of the Rings lost lost so yeah be careful observe couple of more over paint so yeah. so that's something to go on like this yeah. so it's almost like it's a line there and I almost can't see And the thing is, this one is, there is a lot of darkness around it, so, so it's a little bit more difficult to see <coughs> the shape, how it kind of goes into the background. It's usually better with a background where you see a shadow, very concrete shadow hits, but didn't do that in this one and that's too much okay. oh, I 
also something new, something that's very important. Actually, I need to go up here and in like this. because I can actually see what's under and that's a different color again uh, I need to keep it in the reddish zone but like that so now that's underneath and to get more of that feeling I have to have some light hidden hitting up here and there okay so that's why the things take time and can be quite exhausting actually because you see something new the deeper you go the more you see and the more you have to give to it that is why I can do a sketch as you did see in quite a short while but finishing them takes hours upon hours upon Days. So now you can see the background in between, which is darker. There. And then I need to. Link this together like that. See it on the distance. Maybe I should go a little bit closer so you see. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. And there. do get like what is it fifteen hundred dollars for a painting like this it's not so bad but it takes time and you have framing and everything so which is expensive but it's my choice, so and I think the customers are entitled to good work. So I do my best. It's a girl I know asked a question on Twitter today why she should bother working so hard and so few did the hard parts why why not just be content with the more mediocre stuff and I said that is Why do anything at all? I mean, what's, what's the point? No, you have to go all the way. So I sent her a video called All the Way of Charles Bukowski, 
which is on YouTube, it's called All The Way. Go All The Way. And it's so true. And, uh, she snapped out of it and realized that the art is in the deeper you can go the more art it becomes anyway and it's objectively true because because um, that's the original the original um, meaning of the word art is uh, know-how or to be able to uh, so art was a word for skill maybe I should play that Bukowski for you Very nice, love it. Yeah, I can do that. Just two seconds. Go all the way. Otherwise, don't even start. If you are going to try, go all the way. This could mean losing girlfriends, wives, relatives, jobs, and maybe your mind. Go all the way. It could mean not eating for three or four days. It could mean freezing on a park bench. It could mean jail, it could mean derision, mockery, isolation. Isolation is the gift. All the others are a test of your endurance, of how much you really want to do it. And you'll do it, despite rejection and the worst odds. And it will be better than anything else you can imagine. If you're going to try it, Go all the way. There is no other feeling like that. You will be alone with the gods, and the lights will flame with fire. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. All the way. All the way. You will find life straight into perfect laughter. It's the only good fight. There it is.
So, hope you get the point. I did. <coughs> okay. The last layer. Then I put up my Vetouge vanish first, as usually, to get the contrasts. might dissolve a little bit well, it didn't do that right now and that's a good sign so okay Please. Mm. so this is only going to be a touch up give it a little bit of Punch, as we call So, mm. yes, was maybe a little bit too much turpentine. Mm. all dry but it's all lost so it's okay to find the right the right brushes Because when you get into it really deep, um, you only often you only start to see things that you view as mistakes. It's quite a horrible thing, actually. Um, maybe more. Lazur. There's only one thing you have to do when you paint like this, you have to have 
a lot of patience. Take your time. comes a shadow down there on that it's kind of a uh, piece of a, it's a brick but it's a brick who isn't orange it's in a different scale so yeah color scale or whatever you call it so I just push this down I will actually bring out more of that I need more shape right there it's funny I remember Arnold Schwarzenegger who was talking about how he was building his body and he was thinking of it like a sculpture uh, and uh, the muscle, he looked at it as clay and if he saw he needed some more muscle or clay to balance the sculpture on one side he went into the gym and he built up more muscle like a painter will like me now put on more color or even reduce muscle um, to balance the scale and that's also how you should think when you paint like this anyway you think of about I see it probably said it a million times now but think at, think about the color as clay and um, will be okay and you take time you use many layers on this it's like four layers it's not more than four this is the last one four five I could actually maybe I actually have to leave to my exhibition tomorrow with this small some of few paintings so I actually don't have any more time on it I might have deeper if I had more time but that is how it is really with all my paintings that there's also a dimension of time that I tend to I don't get enough time to do it uh, so that will also be one of my projects. I would like to go even deeper if possible. It's also about skill, how skilled you are. Uh, my skills are um, limited. I'm not, I don't have that classical education. I taught myself to paint. I didn't actually learn it from anyone. I just learned by looking at paintings and of course I learned some basis color circle stuff and and I had some inspiring people a teacher called Cecil uh, and um, but she wasn't into painting like I am she was just a person who got me interested in painting in the first place but when it comes to the skill, I didn't go to the academy, I didn't go to any traditional classic art school. I went to an art school, but you didn't actually learn to paint there. You just learned to, to be a conceptual artist. And 
I actually picked up some stuff there, but when it came to the painting, I have learned it from looking at paintings and learning from mistakes. The funny thing is that when I looked at paintings in the beginning, they always looked very sculptor, sculptural, <laughs> or a lot of room in them. But when you see most paintings uh, in galleries, they actually are more flat than you see in uh, than you see in um, the magazines because of when you make a you know the the um, the camera selects out colors and gives it more room or, or more depth and stuff because you also reduce the size. So I thought that paintings were like that, so I tried to paint things with that room that I saw in the pictures. And I think that is one of the reasons why my paint paintings tend to become very three-dimensional. Like things, objects are falling out of the of the canvas. Uh, Rembrandt has some of that. And, uh, yeah. It's just a hypothesis I have. It's not even a theory <laughs> because it's hard to prove it, but I kind of feel like That is one of the reasons, because usually I actually get disappointed when I see classic art pieces in real life. I tend to think, wow, they are so flat. And in the books they are so, so very three-dimensional. So I guess, um, yeah. I think I evolved my own style in a way because I didn't actually learn it from someone and I it's like I've said to a couple of people that I had some had as not students but which I thought to paint a little bit it isn't I can't teach them I can teach them a little bit of how to think but I can't paint for them. And to evolve a skill, you can't do it by talking. You have to do it by painting. You can't talk about texture and color for six months and then suddenly you start painting like Rembrandt. <laughs> it's not how it works. You have to do the work and you have to fail and uh, learn from your failures. If you have somebody who is constantly telling you what to do, you will start looking so much like that person that you don't have your own print into it, fingerprint. And that would be that is sad, you know. It's like it's like these Chinese kids who is playing the piano. Brilliant, yeah. really brilliant, but they're not virtuosos because they have been thought everything from some professor. But of course, if you have the skill and you have the open, you have an open mind, and you are self-critical, honest, uh, you can. Manage to take it further. Honesty is extremely important. Keep your feet on the ground and 
that the best art or the best science or the best things that people have done keep you fixated, grounded to keep you grounded, like let it be your gravity so you don't fly out in this uh, horrible self-righteous bullshit that many artists actually do where they in the end think that they are saving the world with their paintings and believe that they are half almost half gods in a way um, we are humans and humans have the potential for greatness and we have the potential for the opposite it all depends how we focus and how we think and that is my view on things okay, okay. So I'm just going to do some more painting around here and next time you see me, you see me talking about it with a frame on it. Much does it steal anything? It doesn't steal anything from the depth in the onion. And so I'm gonna have to keep it down. Let's talk to this girl today then. Complaining enough, enough, enough money, and she's on welfare in Norway, and has this kid, and I just told her to basically to shut the fuck up and get her shit together, because when you live in the West, especially in Norway, there is no reason for anyone. Not to succeed. And if you chose partying, and drugs, and wasting time instead of getting an education, it's pretty obvious what the problem really is. Of course, there are reasons for things that happen, but feeling sorry for oneself and making problems into identity does not solve anything, nothing. And that was my advice to her. And that is my advice to everyone actually. If you live in the West, especially Norway, especially Western Europe, You have to really insist to fuck up. The system is there to take care of you. And if you fail or fall out of the fall out of so choose the right things. Me, I'm a typical example of a person who has wasted so much time, so much of my life on everything from TV series to too much training, girls I should not have been with, uh, not that I was bad girls actually, I just wasn't really there, and porn, addictions, you know, I could have been much better off if I did the things 
that I told myself I was going to do. In my diaries. But it became better than I thought like 15 years ago. And now I feel like I'm finally become a grown up. At least a little. <laughs> so I can use the last years of my life to become a maybe reach a higher level of aesthetics in my work. Okay, yeah, we're just gonna do a little bit more and yeah. Thanks for okay, welcome to the end of the video. Here you can see the finished result. Uh, if you'd like to support my channel, please go to my Patreon and sign up for a dollar or five. If you do a five dollar Patreon, I will uh, become your mentor, teacher, and uh, help you evolve your painting. And you will also be able to get your hands on a painting like this every month in my Patreon giveaway. So if you want to support me, please go there and sign up. And I see you in the next video.